Today we are at Lake Windermere, the largest of the lakes in the Lake District. And this is Bell Isle here. And over there is Windermere somewhere, the actual town of Windermere. We're going to go for a little walk up the lake shore up here. Cows here trying to figure out how to use the boats. Don't think they're frank to eat that. How about this for a tree? Sweet chestnut. You can tell by the spiralling on the bark. Well, obviously, I recognise the leaves. But often, big chestnut trees like this have spiralling on the bark. I'm just going to go and have a look at this magnificent tree. It's a big one. This is a plant I haven't seen before. Mm. Looks like it might be a relative of Himalayan balsam. Just judging by the leaves, shape of the flowers. These pods look like they're the kind of, yeah, they are the kind of pods that go boom when you touch them. So some other species similar to Himalayan balsam. I will look that up, put it on the screen. Strawberry gardens. So, oh, Bark nice. Barn, Ray Castle, don't know if it goes as far as that, and on the way back we might get the ferry across to Bowness. If I bought my foraging basket, I think we'd find maybe up there, Chanterelles, it's that kind of mossy hillside where we might find them tiny little bit dry but there are lo local bits I have seen a few fungi about but not anything very interesting okay well this is very peculiar and deserves a little bit of investigation it's a tiny little hut with a locked door tiny little it's probably covering a like a gas somebody somebody's gas meter for the campsite opposite or something like that but uh, it looks like a little fairy house can we actually see through the door to see what's going on well I can't but perhaps you can Was that interesting? Let me know. Rose Bay Willow Herb here. Just really the last few flowers of the year on there. I mean to get out. Somebody on the Discord made some syrup, some cordial out of the flowers of Rose Bay Willow Herb earlier in the year. And it looked amazing. So that's a project for next year. Lots of this small balsam here. We identified that as small balsam using the Seek app. 
Yeah, in fact, the whole hillside here is covered with it. So clearly, that's every bit as vigorous in its growth as Himalayan balsam. Anyway, so we're going to go over there later. I think when we've had a walk up the side of the lake here and back down, down that way there's a ferry. So we'll get a ferry across, maybe get a cup of coffee and a slice of cake in some cafe over there. Do not take this enormous log. Okay, I'll leave it then. Some kind of bracket fungus there, can't actually see underneath it and I can't really get down to it because it's a bit of a thicket. Maybe a maize gill, I'm not sure. And some more bits and pieces of shriveled up, possibly the same thing. Yeah, it looks like possibly the same thing on this fallen beech tree here. Somebody forgot to take their jacket with them. There's been a bit of forestry going on here. We've got a bit of a view of the lake. So I think we might just sit here on this stump or on that mossy rock over there. Have a sandwich, a little drink, and just watch the boat to and froing. Somewhere the lake shore is down there, and it's not the kind of lake shore you could just walk along, at least not when the water's this high. So we are having to walk along this path here. Amongst the very tall pines, there's also tall beech trees and a bunch of other species as well. Chestnut there. go past it there's a jetty down here so we might be able to get out on the water and just have a look at the lake shore from the water I'm assuming this place is used to store boats and things be allowed to use it. Please wait here for a crew member to open gate prior to boarding. So, there are some folks fishing there off the edge, but anyway, there's a view of the lake. I'm not going to go out on the jetty because breaking rules in a video not generally a smart idea. So we've walked as far as Red Nab. We were thinking about walking on to Ray Castle where you can get a ferry or a cruise boat that will go up to the Amble side and then across to Brockhole. And then we could have walked back down to, from Brockhole to Bowness and got the ferry back across. But, uh, so I think we'll probably head back and see if we can get the ferry across to Bowness and have a cream tea. I think we've had the best of the day as far as the weather is concerned. The forecast was for rain around about midday. It's now midday and it's raining. I think there was forecast for thunderstorms at one o'clock. So I'll let you know if that one happens on time. Okay, I'm going to put my poncho on. And of course we did time our journey so that uh, we're at the furthest point we're going to get from the car when the rain is the heaviest. How about that, the timing? I mean, the forecast was there, so we just didn't believe it would be quite that accurate. And I suggest we just keep going. I don't think this is a passing shower. Yeah. I think this is set in for the day, probably. Oh. Oh. 
Don't worry, Eva. It's fine. Well, that might be the end of our trip to Windermere today. Okay, so the other day, the other side of Windermere was a complete washout. Thunderstorm blew in. It was on the weather forecast, but we were not prepared. So we're back for another go. The other side of the lake today at Bowness, and we're going to get a ferry, going to get one of the boats, and go for a boat trip around the lake. I mean, it's tempting to get a self-drive boat, but, or even a rowing boat, but I think we'll let somebody else do the driving today, or piloting, captaining, whatever you want to call it. Okay, well, we're going on the Red Cruise, which goes from Bowness up to Ambleside and Brockhole. Got our tickets. And we got a ticket for Eva. Well-behaved dogs travel free, apparently. Well, I won't tell them if you don't. So coming up to Ambleside Village, or town, I'm not sure, clouds on top of the mountains. I think I'm going to try and find a pub or a little cafe or something, I'll have a cup of coffee and a bit of cake. This could be the place. Uh, what is it, Tuesday? Yes. Closed. Oh. side to the waterfalls up here it doesn't say how far up here let's find out oh I can hear waterfalls I'm not exactly sure why, but this reminds me of that walk up the hill in Granada that time when I was looking for the Fountain of the Hazels. Just something about following 
a river upstream. Somebody's going to ask about panning for gold down there. As far as I know, there isn't gold in these rocks. I think we'd know if there was. Oh, how about living in that house there then, with its own little seating area overlooking the water. Nice. walking on the ends of the stratum here of slate. This is an upended piece of geology here. You can see all these rocks sticking up like this because the bedding planes are going down into the hill. But apparently that's not the actual falls either, so we've got to follow the red arrows up there somewhere. So it looks like it's a kind of series of ledges and falls. I don't know if that's a natural fall or if that's a weir of some sort. That's a red arrow there, so we're going this way to the falls. Now the path is also a stream. Interesting. Well, we must have climbed a good few hundred feet so far. This must be a little viewpoint down here. Yeah, let's have a look. Ooh. Oh, yes. Humans, please stop doing this. Yeah, all right, hang on, Eva. I haven't got as many legs as you.
little bit of footage here for the subscriber who said that they really like mosses. Look at the mosses on this old decaying seat. In fact, this is kind of moss heaven here. Look at all those little things down there. Moss-covered rocks and tree stumps. Moss-covered everything, to be honest. It's the level of moisture here in the air. <laughs> Amazing place for a picnic table. What is a cafe? Well, if you hadn't already had coffee and cake, I might be tempted. But I want to save myself for lunch now. But yeah, amazing place for a rather damp picnic bench. Moss and fern covered walls. See, this is a fern, I think. I'm not sure. I think that's a fern. Obviously these are, but I think these are little trailing ferns. Probably not the sort of thing that you can uh, grow just anywhere. They are only, they're obviously adapted to being continually moist. I'll see if I can identify this fern and or moss and I'll uh, let you know what that is. Well, funny enough, this is a fern moss. <laughs> that, that answers that question. And this is neither a moss nor a fern. This is a, I think a peltate lichen. And these are the little kind of fruiting bodies right here. How about that? And that. So that's the top of the falls there. And across the bridge. And we'll walk back down the other side into the town. So, slightly less made up footpath or track, but still an official right of way down the other side of the falls. Now, here you can get some clues on about the geology of what's going on here. See, these are great big slabs of rock here. Now it might be that they were originally level and they've just fallen as the water's eroded underneath them but I think this is actually tilted sandstone layers or limestone layers or slate or shale or something like that one of these sedimentary rock rocks with conspicuous bedding planes and yeah you can see the kind of flat layers in there and the water is obviously having to contend with that now there is no guardrail on this side so we need to be Perhaps a bit more careful because falling off the edge here means going. Oh, there is a guardrail on the lower on the lower track, so yeah, we would only fall probably 10 meters or so, which sounds fine, doesn't it? That is often the case coming down a steep slope, especially steep, bumpy slope like this is a bit higher impact than going up. But the views are worth it. Interesting. A log here with coins hammered into it. Presumably some sort of good luck thing, although it doesn't look like it was good luck for the tree. Don't know. It's the same as the padlock thing, actually, it's one of these things. It does look like quite old coins. That looks like it's been there quite a long time. Old coins, sixpence. Look these old sixpences there. Yeah, some of these coins are probably quite old. So, I don't know, maybe that tree was standing by the side of the trail here or something at some point. Yeah. 
so here's the bridge where we cross back over and I think the trail will rejoin the one we left or the one we came up on. So yeah, here's the thing about gold panning in the UK. There probably isn't gold here. It's probably just not the right kind of geology for gold to be deposited. But even if there was, and even if we found some, I'm not allowed to keep it because all of the gold underground, in rivers, wherever, kind of automatically belongs to the crown. Which you might think would be a, a, a huge imposition, but in all honesty, there isn't that much gold in the UK. So it's not like that weird rule really takes very much away from people on a day-to-day -day basis. But yeah, if you find gold, even on private property, even if you own the property, the gold in the ground belongs to the crown. But, you know, it could be worse. In some countries, I understand they have laws where you get arrested for crossing the road in the wrong place. So, you know, personal freedoms and whatnot, it's all relative. Stepping stones. Probably something about make a wish or something, isn't there? Whoa, blimey. That's fun. Okay, watch out for that one. So this little spring or brook here coming out underneath these very, very wonky flagstones comes out under that bridge. And now look at this arch, because it looks to me like that is a dry stone arch. There's no cement holding that together, just gravity, just the, the right shaped stones formed into an arch and then paved over the top. I don't think there's any cement holding that together. That was a, a dry stone bridge. Kind of amazing. So that was Ambleside Falls, a worthwhile detour, I would say. We only just stumbled across that. We didn't intend or plan to walk up there today. We just were heading back down through the village, thinking about getting some lunch. And we saw the signs of the falls, and so we just thought, oh well, we'll give it a go. And well worth the walk. It is a little bit of a climb, and I was slightly out of breath when we got to the top, but yeah, well worth the walk up there. So back down into Ambleside now for a bit of lunch, and then we'll head back on the boat, back to Bowness and Windermere, Windermere town. military plane I've seen fly over, oh. so that was a Hercules, I think. So this is a slightly better visit, I think, to Windermere than our pr previous... Yeah, I know you want some chips, all right? Than our previous rather washed out visit. Uh, I'm enjoying this one a lot more. Pint of Swan Black, chicken Caesar salad, Jenny's got a chicken burger, Eva's got dog biscuits and stuff, but I'm sure she'll get a scrap or something. Yeah, enjoying this one a lot more. Right, no, didn't touch the sides. So yeah, that was Ambleside, so stroll back to the boat now. And uh, back to Windermere and Bowness. Ambleside and Waterhead behind us. We're turning to head south along Windermere. To the right, between the trees and the reeds, is a mouth. So we're back in Bowness now, 
I think we might have a little wander down, see what old Bowness is like. Presumably this is just the kind of more, well, the older part of the village. I suppose we'll find out. No. Frequented by Charles Dickens, apparently. So that was our trip to Lake Windermere. I think the highlight of the thing has been Ambleside for me. And the falls. How about you, Jenny? Highlight of the day? Yeah. Yes, the falls. Yeah. Hmm. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.